Now, we'll, uh, <coughs> of course, graph all si sorts of different things. I've done a couple of parabolas, and we just pretty much graphed them on there. But let's talk about lines. Um, f of x equals 5x plus 4, just a second. You know, in function form, uh, a line, it's m mx plus b, right? This is the m. This is the b. What, are, what does m and b mean? We've got ourselves a line. It's linear. The m is slope, and the b is y-intercept. So, I mean, you can graph them on the calculator if you want to, but uh, you should be able to graph these pretty and we've got a slope of 5, so it's going to rise um, <clears throat> m equals 5, so it's 5 over 1. <laughs> rise 5, run 1. Pretty quick, uh, pretty quick graph. Do those pretty quickly, all right? And uh, as far as domain and range, what do you got there? What would be the domain? X can be anything. What about the Y? anything, right? So the domain and range are both uh, all real numbers or negative infinity, positive infinity, right? Okay. The one exception to that where you have positive infinity, negative infinity, uh, both the domain and range would be this one. I'm not sure I didn't, uh, I don't know if I saw one in this book or not, but uh, this one's just a little bit different than that one because uh, this is where the function is a constant, but that's a line, but it's a special type of line. What type of line have I got here? It's going to be horizontal, yeah. I'm going to have a horizontal line. Basically, it's saying the y value is always 9. Here's the y value of 9. The y value is always 9, or the function value is always 9. So you just have a horizontal, so you get one of those constant graphs. Um, and so I mentioned this one because, just in case, they ask for domain and range on it. The domain's not so bad. It's all real numbers. X can be anything. I, well, I guess that is a little tricky because there's not an X, uh, an X variable there, but X still can be anything. The X values still can be negative infinity to positive infinity. What about the Y's, though? What about the range? Yeah, if you want the, the smallest range you have here, it's just 9. Yeah, the only y value you get is 9. Um, they'd probably put, uh, to designate a set or something like that, they'd probably put the braces around it. But yeah, it's just one value. A little different. Okay. <clears throat> Um, <clears throat> we'll talk about some interesting ones along the way, but let me, let me, yeah, let me mention one, uh, like you'll get, get in the assignment here. We'll come back to lines in just a second. Well, I guess, I guess this one. <clears throat> you'll see, okay. All right, what about this one? You can get different shapes for, for one like this, but uh, uh, let's just go ahead and do this one, okay. Any ideas? What that looks like? Okay, you saw uh, saw something there. Okay. Well, let me uh, let me mention here um, something. Um, first of all, there is a restriction on the domain. Don't we have uh, <clears throat> a domain here? Restriction x values. There is an x value that x cannot be. What x cannot be equal to two. Uh, why not? You can't have denominator zero, right? And so make sure, clear on that. 
x cannot be 2 because if we plug in x to be 2 to our function, we'll get a denominator 0. <laughs> and uh, that just won't work out. So that, write it this way, meaning x can be 1 or negative 1 or uh, negative a half. It just can't be 2. It can be 50. It just can't be 2, okay? <clears throat> and so sometimes you can see restrictions like the square root thing. We talked about that. Um, so x can't be 2. Now, as far as the graph goes, uh, he kind of uh, hit upon it there. Here's what happens. If you do a little factoring in that, you can kind of see this is, does reduce a little bit. And if you put, put this in just like this, here's what you get. I think. It looks like this. It's a little misleading. But if you, if you put that in a graphing calculator, you're going to get something like that. I'm pretty sure. You do it. Okay. It's a little misleading, but that's uh, x squared minus 4 divided by x plus 2. Um, and one thing, if you're putting these in on the uh, TI-84s anyway, uh, <clears throat> be sure to put parentheses uh, Parentheses around the top and the bottom. Whoops, did the wrong thing. Yeah, okay. Turns out to be a line, and that's because of some cancellation. However, how do we how do we factor this in? X can't be two. Well, there's actually turns out if X can't be two. There's a hole in this one. That's that's the catch on this one. Yeah, you get a line because it reduces to X plus two, like you said. It's, X can't be 2, and so you wind up with a hole, hole in the graph, a line with a hole in it. Okay, So that's how it uh, comes, uh, comes in, into there. And I think we might look at that one later on, uh, maybe even Wednesday, but we'll get to that when we get to it. Okay. All right. <coughs> But I did want to mention uh, uh, something else here on, on while we're talking about graphing functions. The other thing they'll, <coughs> they're re reminding us here, or talking about in this first section of the uh, chapter, is these piecewise defined functions. Piecewise defined functions. You know what I mean by that? Basically, a function defined in pieces. So we've got two pieces of uh, to the function. First piece on this one, let's say, is x plus two, and that's if x is less than or equal to one. And then it's negative three x if x is greater than one. You know what I mean by that? Have you seen those before? We'll, uh, we'll utilize these a little bit, so I imagine that's why they're bringing it up right now to us. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, it's just defining the function in pieces. If, uh, you know, as far as input values, if, if I input a value that's less than or equal to 1, I go with the top. So if I do f of uh, 0, I use the top, right? Because zero is, that's their x value, it's less than one, so I go with zero plus two then, which is two. If I have a value like four, which one do I use there? Well, that, that x value is greater than one, so I use the second piece. Negative three times x would be negative three times the input is negative 12. And we'll <coughs> sometimes have to do that. Uh, input those like that. I think though on this one they actually want us to graph this. And the way I like to describe it is here's what we've got. Let's just think about this in two pieces. Let's think about f of x equals x plus 2. Okay? We know about that. f of x equals x plus 2. Just a simple line, right? m is 1, b is 2, so I've got this. 
Y intercepts two, so I rise one, run one. I got this. However, I only want this piece to have X less than or equal to one. What does that mean? I only want the piece where X is less than or equal to one. So here's X is one and anything less. So which piece of this do I want? I only want from here and back, right? This piece out here, I don't, I don't care about. <clears throat> it's only starting at X is one and less than that. So it's this piece right here. So that, that's the piece of the graph that that tells me about. Starting at one, what is the other point? Three, one, three, or value? One, three. <clears throat> so it starts at one, three, and then goes angled back like that. The other piece, the f of x equals negative 3x, also a line. The y-intercept is 0. So this one starts at 0, 0. And then that's my slope, so it's uh, negative 3 over 1. One way to get it. Um, <clears throat> so it's down 3 and over 1, so however you need to graph, graph that. So that one looks like this. However, if I throw in the restriction x is greater than 1, what does that mean? I only want the piece that x is greater than 1. So anything x is equal to 1, it starts right here. So anything less than 1, which is this piece here, I don't want. I only want the piece that x is greater than 1. Now, what does that mean for this point right here, though? That point is actually not included, is it? Because I don't want it equal to 1, so I don't include that point, which it's, it is 1, negative 3, but it's everything thereafter. So that's the piece. This part contributes to that graph. So it would start at 1, negative 3, but not include that negative, 1, negative 3 point, and then... And so the graph tells you why this is called a piecewise, because the graph's in pieces most of the time. Sometimes they, they get connected up, but it's a piecewise defined, defined in pieces. Is that okay? Any problems with that question? Sorry. All good? All right. <clears throat> I don't think, uh, I used to do some absolute values here, but I don't see any in the uh, assignment, so <clears throat> let me uh, mention here another thing about lines <clears throat> real quick. Um, <clears throat> that is, find the equation of a line. We have to do that several times uh, throughout the semester, so be sure we know how to do this. Find the equation of the line uh, with points, two points, 8, negative 6, and 12, 9. Did you do that for me? Find the equation of a line with those points couple of ways we could go. Um, well, one thing we would have to start off either way we go with is I'd have to start off with a, a formula, and that would be what? Slope formula, right? I'd have to start here with the slope formula. I need the slope of this line. Either way, <coughs> I determine this equation. I'm going to need the slope. And slope formula, I'm talking about m equals the difference of the y's, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. We'll use that formula quite a lot here as we go along. Um, <clears throat> so remember that one. So what have I got here? Just the second y, which is 9, minus the first y, which is negative 6. So I have the old double negative there. Then the second x, 12, minus the first x, 8. And so that winds up with, what, 15 fourths? 
or uh, let's go ahead and just call it, um, was that 3.75? 3.75. All right, now, this is where you can go two different paths, but to the same, uh, same end result. I like to, since I'm trying to find the equation of a line, unless it's horizontal or vertical, I like to think equation of a line is y equals mx plus b. Okay, and what that amounts to is I need to know two things. I need to know the m and the b. I've got the m now. m is 3.75. I just need to figure out the b, <clears throat> which I can do if I plug in an x comma y, and I'm going to go with this one, plug this in for x and y, then I can find the b, can I? x is 12, y is 9. Hey, that works out, doesn't it? Uh, 3.75, that would be that 45? Is this 45? 45, okay, thanks. <clears throat> and so then subtract the 45 and we got, got our B. Negative 36 is B, right? Believe that? Uh, which means the equation is the y equals mx plus b is y equals 3.75x minus the 36. That's the answer they'll want. Right there. Did I do that right? Check me on that. Make sure I got it. Now, <clears throat> if you prefer, what, does anybody know another way we could do it? Is everybody uh, familiar with the point slope? And we'll, we'll talk about point slope uh, y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. If you want to do it that way, you'd work it the same way. Uh, you got your m, you got your x1 and y1. Plug either one of those in could be x1 or y1. Um, but ultimately, you wind up in the same place. Uh, so if you want to do it that way, that's fine. It's a good form too. But I like this one, uh, especially if you're going to be tutoring. Uh, well, I guess some. Instructors prefer prefer point slope, but this is just another way to get a line. And, uh, y equals mx plus b is usually what you're looking for, anyway. So, any uh, thoughts or concerns there? Is that okay? Any that get that right? Uh, <clears throat> one other thing that I, when I was looking through the homework, I I noticed. So let me let me do uh, do one of these, and that that'll be it for today. Uh, give you your assignment. <clears throat> There we got this. Going back to the function notation, there's a, uh, they'll have you compute what is known as the difference quotient. And um, just to give you an idea here how, how this uh, will play out, yeah, let me just do, um, different ways, but <clears throat> the generic difference quotient is this. F of A plus H, parentheses uh, around the A plus H, minus F of A, and then you divide all that by H. The A could be just a number. They could put in a number. I noticed in the book there they, they do have one where you, you've got the A as a number, but... <coughs> basically the same um, way it looks. What does it mean? Is everybody okay here? Okay. 